The Euphrates River, a lifeline to millions, is slowly disappearing, and with it, the hopes and dreams of an entire region. But what is causing the river to dry up? Is it just a natural occurrence, or is there something more sinister at play? What do scientists mean by a horrifying discovery beneath its once flowing water? We may never know for sure, but the consequences of this vanishing river are undeniable. As the world watches in fear, the prophecy that foretold the Euphrates demise appears to be coming true, leaving us to wonder what other secrets are hidden beneath its dry riverbed, waiting to be uncovered. In the word of God, it is said that seven angels will pour out seven vials or bowls. The fifth angel, as stated in Revelation 16.10, poured out his bowl, a metaphor of the fifth vial on the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. So what kind of beast are we talking about here? According to Revelation 13, there are two beasts representing Satan and his empire, which are further described in Revelation 12, 9, 13, 1, and 11. In the midst of the tribulation, around the midpoint of the week, the fifth vial is poured out after the testimony of the saints and the two witnesses. Undoubtedly, this will have significant consequences. Now that the fifth vial has been emptied, let's explore what happens when the sixth vial is opened. The book of Revelation 16.12 speaks of the river Euphrates and the pouring forth of the contents of its six angels' vials upon it, causing its water to dry up and making way for the kings of the east. However, the interpretation of this prophecy is purely metaphorical. In today's world, leaders no longer need to wait for rivers to dry up before crossing it with their armies. They have ships, planes, and bridges to facilitate their passage. When the sixth vial is opened, we will be at figurative threshold for the second coming of Christ. It is a reminder that we may possess advanced technology and transportation, yet we are still subject to the ultimate will and plan of a higher power. The Euphrates River has long been a dividing line between governments and nations, but it once held a more symbolic meaning as well. It separated Israel and Babylon, becoming a metaphorical boundary between the righteous and the unrighteous. Genesis 15.18 records God's promise to Abraham that his family would inherit the land from the river of Egypt into the great river, the river Euphrates. This accurately describes the area to the west of the Euphrates, which is known as Israel, the homeland of the Israelites. It is a reminder that even geographical boundaries can carry deeper significance and meaning. Deuteronomy 7.6 tells us that the Israelites as the chosen people of God inhabited the righteous land to the west of the Euphrates River. Despite their shortcomings and repeated transgression against God and each other, the Israelites were entrusted with transmitting God's word to the rest of the world. This responsibility is echoed in the New Testament with reference such as Matthew 28 19 and Mark 16 15, reminding us of the ongoing mission to share the word of God with all nations. The Euphrates River, as discovered by Uppsala University, effectively split the land of Babylon in two, with the eastern side concerned to be the unrighteous due to its pagan practices and idol worship. This area was representative of evil and devil. However, the city of Babylon itself was located on both sides of the river, with its primary location being on the eastern side. As the Bible prophesizes in Revelation, the drying up of the river Euphrates signifies a blurring on the lines between righteous and unrighteous people. In these times, people are turning away from goodness and embracing wickedness, as foretold in 2 Timothy 3, 1-7 and Isaiah 5:20. We can see these events happening in the world today, but the sixth vial will occur during the tribulation. It's important to know the significance of history in understanding these events. Let me tell you a fascinating history about Cyrus the Great and his conquest of Babylon, which was situated on both sides of the river Euphrates. The Persians, who were the second kingdom, had to come up with a clever strategy to circumvent the impregnable walls of Babylon. So they rerouted the river, lowering its waters to a more manageable level, which allowed their army to wade through and march undetected under the walls of Babylon. This happened during one of the city's most important religious feasts when the citizens were preoccupied. The Persians won the Battle of Opis in 539 BCE, resulting in the fall of the empire. Jeremiah chapter 51 contains a prophecy about Babylon that has not yet been fulfilled, but this historical event certainly comes to mind. As you may know, the Tigris and the Euphrates River flow through Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, but the region is currently facing severe consequences due to water loss. 
According to an article in Smithsonian Magazine, the situation is dire. The Tigris-Euphrates Basin is losing groundwater at a faster rate than any other place on Earth except for India. Motaz al-Dabbas, a professor at the University of Baghdad, has warned us that by the 2020s, there will be no water at all in the Euphrates River during the summer. This will be an unmitigated disaster for the ecosystem. The article further explains that the people of Iraq are not prioritizing water conservation due to the decades-long war that has raved the country. However, if the government fails to take action, the Euphrates will dry up completely and put the lives of countless Iraqis who depend on the river in danger. This is a crisis that is being ignored, according to Motaz al-Dabbas, a water resource and environment professor at the University of Baghdad. Despite the fact that the passage in Revelation 16.12 is symbolic, it does not mean that God will not provide us with a physical sign that we can see with our own eyes. I found this boat intriguing from a prophetic standpoint and concerning given the current state of the world. The article Desert, Drying the Euphrates Threatened Strategy in Syria, published a few days ago, demonstrates that the Euphrates River is continuing to dry up. Now is the time to ponder on the verse found in Revelation 16.12. The symbolic drying up of the Euphrates River in Revelation raises important question, why? The reason being to allow the kings of the East to pass through. Now who exactly are those monarchs that rule the East? It is crucial to understand that the world East literally means rising of sun, which refers to the rising of sun from the direction of the East. Therefore, this doesn't necessarily imply that these monarchs will come from the East in a literal sense. We must remember that we are talking about prophecy and symbology, and according to 1 John 5.19, the whole world lies in wickedness, not just a part of it. Furthermore, one of Satan's many names is Lucifer, which means morning star, and also refers to the sun as the rising of light, Isaiah 14.12. This is just one of Satan's many identities. When we put this into context, we can understand that the king of the east, the kings of the rising light, and the kings of the morning star are all the same. They are the kings of Satan, which are the kings that we heard about in, in the Scarlet Beast with the seven heads and the ten horns. As we delve deeper into the prophecy of Revelation, we come across the symbolic drying up of the river Euphrates, which allows the kings of the east to cross over. But who are these kings and why are they crossing over? The word east is symbolic and refers to the rising of the sun, not necessarily a literal direction. These kings are in fact the kings of Satan, the rulers of the sixth kingdom, also known as clay kings. At the beginning of the tribulation, Satan will make a covenant with these kings, and Revelation 16.14 tells us that they will gather from the battle of the great day of the God Almighty. Before this battle, the two witnesses will reveal to the world that they will rise from the dead in three and a half days. When they do, Jesus Christ and his angels will appear to defeat Satan and his rule. The drying up of the river Euphrates is a sign that the battle of Armageddon is approaching. We must look back to the events of the ancient Babylon to understand this prophecy fully. The battle will be fought by spiritual Babylon and it will mark the end of Satan's reign. Approximately 600 years before Christ, pagan Babylon fought against God's people and kept them in servitude for 70 years. Finally, Cyrus was able to conquer Babylon from the east by rerouting the Euphrates River and entering through the water gates. The Old Testament narrative will be interpreted symbolically at the end of time, just as it was written down originally. The book of Revelation reveals that spiritual Israel, or the church, will be subject to tyranny by Babylon the Great, a false religious system under Satan's domination. When the waters of the Euphrates River dry up, this event will signify the freedom of God's people from the control of spiritual Babylon. In Revelation 16.12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl in the river Euphrates, drying up its water and clearing the path for the kings to come from the east for the battle of Armageddon. When we study Bible prophecy, we must keep in mind that immediate fulfillment is often physical and local, while the final fulfillment has a spiritual application. Therefore, we should not expect a literal Cyrus to turn a river into dry land to save Israel. In prophetic language, Water often symbolizes people and nations, as we see in Revelation 17.15, where the waters that the harlot sits on represents multitudes, nations, and tongues. The sea symbolizes the people and nations that support false religion of Babylon, which persecutes the real saints. The drying up of the water signifies a departure of support from those who followed Babylon to rescue their people from Babylon. 
When the sixth vial is emptied, this signifies that the Euphrates River had dried up, making way for the final moments before Jesus' return. Satan will gather the kings of the earth, including the kings of the east and the iron kings, to fight against Jesus and his armies. However, they will ultimately be defeated. So this is all about the video. If you like the video, don't forget to like the video and feel free to share the video to others. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more videos like this.